here is the application you will be developing, Login Validator. I have two web pages, uh, web forms. One's called login.aspx. I did set that as the startup page, so when I'm testing, this will be the page that opens. Then I have a page 2.aspx that we will be redirecting to if the login is valid. Now I did have to go in, like we did the last time, to the web config file and I added to it the app settings element for unobtrusive validation mode and you need to do that if you want to use the validator controls and I'm going to ask you to use the required field validator controls. I will, go ahead, I will go ahead and copy this text onto our lab so you can copy and paste it into the web.config file. I have here the login page in split view. So you can see we have an H1 heading, some labels, two text boxes, and then I've added some required field validators for the username and the password. In addition, uh, the username text box, I have set the maximum number of characters to 40, and the password text box, as you can see, the max length is 20. I've also added here, it's just a label. Notice that visible is false initially, uh, but if the page doesn't validate, on post back, it's going to say problem with login, try again. And I've made the four color red. So let's test this and see how it works. I'm going to add a valid name and password. And you'll notice that it redirected me to page two. Go back, leave that empty. I required field validator. I think I would change that to red so the use, user knows that it's an error. Um, let me go ahead and put a semicolon in. And I'm not telling him specifically what the problem is, but anyone that's going to put in a semicolon or a couple of dashes, okay, is trying to do something that's causing a problem. So, Anyone that puts dashes in or some of these illegal characters is trying to cause a problem. And they're not going to get through. So unless they put in a legitimate value plus also that values in the database. So if, the, if it's not in the database, I may add another error message, but I'm not going to ask you to do that. Back to the code, uh, double click on the submit button is going to create uh, an event handler for me. And what I've done is, like we did the last time, I've grabbed the data and I placed them into string variables. And I'm going to assume that it's not a good login, meaning that they entered Bonnie and Zebra, but Bonnie and Zebra aren't in the database. It's not going to return that record. I have a method called validate user, and that's the first thing it does. Now, this method validate user is returning a Boolean value. And that's what's deciding if you want to go into this if statement. The validate user. And in validate user, I'm going to assume that it's true, that it is valid what the user entered. I have my regular expression pattern here. I Once again, I should, didn't need to do this. This is redundant. But I grab the data from the text box. And then I'm going to try. Oh, I need to come up here and show you this. If you want to use a namespace in C Sharp, in Java it's import, in C Sharp it's a using directive. However, since I'm coding the code in the same page as the uh, web form, we're going to use this code here and I'll copy and paste it for you. Make sure you do it before the top doc type. Import namespace equals, and this is like the using directives, saying I'm going to be using this namespace or library. Okay, let's come back down here. I am going to create an, a match object. And the name of this match object, you can make that 
name up, but we'll call it reg regular expression match. So this is in that namespace. And it is the regex class dot match my username and my pattern. So regex match will be an object that I can then test if it is a successful match. So success is property, true or false, that happened when it was generated here. In this case, I don't want it to match because if it does match, then one of those characters was in the username string. And I am going to say, well, that user ID is valid is false. Not going to get more specific. It would take me longer to get more specific error messages out to the user. And I don't want you to take that long in the lab. If for some reason there's an error here, we're not going to let them get through. Because, you know, I don't want to give all those account numbers away. So if the try clause fails and it comes in the catch, I also put the user ID as false. So assume the user ID is true, test it, change it if it's not a good one, and return. We return up here, and if this is true, I am building, uh, I need to authenticate the user now. But just because they entered good data that didn't have those characters doesn't mean they're in the database. So I'm not asking you to create a database here. So I just put some comments, you know, this is something you would do later, but you would build your select statement based on that. And then you would query the database and it would turn hopefully one record in the record set. That's the valid login. But if it doesn't return the record, then it's not a good login. So before the if, I'm going to assume that you didn't give me a valid password and username. And then if I know that you didn't give me bad characters, I'm going to go ahead and try it. If you gave me ba bad characters and I, and I tried it anyway, right there I can get some SQL injection. So I don't want to try to execute the select statement unless I know there are no bad characters in there. Okay? And assuming that then it is a good login, then a uh, good login is true. And then to decide whether I want to redirect or let you into the website, if the page is valid and if it's a good login, then I'll redirect. If none of that happens, then we will get the error message. And you saw that error message in the demonstration. So I hope this helps you build your application which will test for whether a username is using those illegal characters in helping you to prevent SQL injection.